What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Draymond Green Show. This is our third episode of season two. And I think we're rolling right now. We had Stephen A on last week. I hope everybody enjoyed that episode as much as I enjoyed uh, holding the interview. It was very fun sitting in the opposite seat of Stephen A and asking him all the questions you want to ask. We all know what Stephen A does on TV. So I thought that was dope. And this week, we got the one and only, the first six man that was really making six man popular. And then Lou Will came in and took it to another level. Jamal Crawford, we have him on this week's show, who's also a new a new teammate of mine on the Turner side of things, as we all know. He's, he's with Turner now. He's on the Tuesday show. I think it's so great to see someone that loves basketball, that knows the game as well as Jamal on TV, because he just has that. He's, Jamal Crawford still has the love that a child has for the game of basketball. Like, you go through all this stuff, man. You go through college. You go through NBA, and the challenges, right, it can lessen your love. It can make it more of a business for you. And even someone like Jamal Crawford, who career maybe didn't end quite the way he wanted to end, um, still has that adolescent love for the game of basketball. And I think that's always refreshing. So to have that on your TV screen every week, I hope you take advantage of it. But first, definitely uh, – enjoy this week's episode and we're going to bring him back for a part two because he actually was getting ready to go on TNT and we had to cut the interview a little short and there was so many more things to talk about so I will make sure we get that delivered to you but for this week I hope you enjoy what's there and over the next couple weeks we got some amazing guests lined up so make sure you subscribe to the show if you haven't already Stay locked in. If you love the dubs, you know that January is a key month for us. Big matchups at home against Phoenix, Brooklyn, Memphis, and on the road against teams like Boston and Cleveland. Gonna be a lot of fun to watch on television, but what if you actually could be at those games? For last minute amazing deals on tickets, not just to the dubs games, but your favorite NBA team, check out Game Time, the fastest growing ticketing app in the US. And it doesn't stop with the NBA. Game Time has tickets to the NFL playoffs, NHL, and college basketball games. Even concerts and comedy shows too. So if you're in New York and you wanna go see the Knicks take on Cleveland or the Lakers, Game Time has you covered. Or if you want to see Adam Sandler live tonight, this weekend, anytime soon, download the Game Time app, create an account, and redeem code GREEN in all caps for $20 off your first purchase. Terms may apply. Again, create an account, enter the code GREEN, that's G-R-E-E-N, for $20 off. No matter where you live, get out and have some fun this week. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. But let me get into this week's top of the show, which is number one, as we all know, the Golden State Warriors, myself, uh, my wife, who I was actually extremely happy, was able to attend with me. We went to the White House yesterday, and it's my second time back, although I've won four championships. As you all know, we didn't have the opportunity to go in 2017 and 2018. Now, you know, they'll say, hey, they weren't invited. Um, Quite frankly, it's cool to say, oh, you're not invited after you say you're not going. Like, if that's what makes you feel good, then great. And that's kind of what happened to us. So I don't think it was quite because we weren't invited. I think we turned down the option. And then we're not invited became a thing. But quite frankly, didn't want to go those years anyway, although the experience of going is absolutely incredible. But as you know, experiences are also made by the people that you attend them with. And so our experience yesterday was absolutely incredible. Um, The hospitality that President Biden, um, our VP Harris, um, Kamala Harris, by the way, the hospitality that they showed us was absolutely insane. I mean, from the band that they, I mean, they had a few instruments from the band playing on the first floor when we walked in, went up the stairs, 
and it was a full band playing, and and they're playing "We Are the Champions" when we walked up, and then just the different tunes that they were playing. Uh, their outfits almost looked like the Nutcracker outfits. I, I'm pretty sure they probably were the Nutcracker outfits. Um, I mean, it was such an incredible experience, and everybody was so nice. They were so open. Uh, I, I'd say, the, you know, obviously you meet the, the president of the United States, the vice president of the United States is going to take the cake. But one of the most interesting people that I had the opportunity to meet uh, was President Biden's head speechwriter, Vinay. And he was so informative. Uh, any question that I asked, I actually had the opportunity to speak with him at dinner a little while the night before our visit after the game and just asking different questions. And it was such an incredible experience. And I think, you know, for, for me personally, I enjoyed it because I didn't ask the questions from uh, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, or you're doing this right. I more so asked these questions from essentially from a dumbfounded space. Like, I really wanted to know these answers. I didn't have an opinion on it, so my questions weren't framed a certain way because I had an opinion on certain things. It was just things that I wanted to know. And he, and he shared things that, um, I won't share on here, but that were really, really enlightening to me, enlightening to me, and also very informative. Like, I felt like I learned so, I mean, conversation started, we were standing, we probably stood there for an hour and 20 minutes, just my Steph, Steph, myself, him. Uh, Steph's god brother, Cy, actually works on his speech writing team, which was absolutely incredible. Um, Chris, who worked in the Obama administration, and just asking questions and the willingness to answer those questions were absolutely incredible. So I want to thank Vinay for the experience and, and things that he shared and, and taught as well, because that was absolutely amazing. He actually introduced me to uh, President Biden's head advisor on the Ukraine-Russia war which I had some questions for her as well, and she answered those questions. And I, you know, in politics, sometimes we, we watch these things on TV, and you don't really know what to believe. You know, you don't know. You look at one station, they're saying this. You look at the next station, they're saying something totally different. And so just to be able to get that firsthand insight was absolutely amazing to me. And, oh, by the way, for you Michigan fans out there, I said the head strategist on the Ukraine-Russia war for President Biden that I had the opportunity to make, meet, Michigan State Spartan. And that had to be one of the highlights. Uh, my wife's obviously a Spartan. So for us to meet her and, and ask some questions and have that Spartan green blood at the White House was absolutely amazing. And, and, it, and it was really a highlight. and so. Those were some of the best people that I met. And don't, don't get me wrong, we met incredible people. I think the job that they've done on uh, putting an administration together, the people that they have around. One thing that I was really, I was really impressed with is the youth that they have in their administration. Like, you know, everyone looks at President Biden's age and, you know, his age is getting up there. But I think, to have so much youth around, I think for me, as an American citizen myself, that was very comforting because, you know, so many times you get into politics and, and people are much older. And how do they relate to what a 24-year-old thinks, just a 24-year-old American thinks? But to see that there was so much youth on, uh, um, within the administration, it's very comforting to know that they're getting that perspective. And it's not just the perspective of some 60-year-old or some 50-year-old, uh, although 50 is an old, I don't think. But it's a totally different perspective coming from generations. And the youth that they had around, I thought that was a huge thing. As an American, I left there and was like, wow, that, that's great. Like, that, that made me feel like uh, my point of view will be heard. My, my voice will be heard. because 
they're all right in the trenches, if you will, of life that we're all in. You know, I'm 32 years old. There's 30-year-olds. There's 28-year-olds. There's I met some 24-year-olds. Like, it's just so to have those different perspectives around in the White House, I think, is absolutely incredible. Um, within this, I want to give you a, a behind-the-scenes look of just how it all went down. Uh, the transportation, we took two buses arriving. Uh, buses get searched. They come on. You, you're not allowed to get off the bus until your IDs are checked. It's not like you're getting off the bus and they're checking them outside of the bus. Uh, it is as tight as you'd imagine. Um, and then you enter those gates of the White House, and it's like, wow. Like, it, it, it produced no less of a feeling than it produced the first time we went in 2015. And, you know, to see how tight the security is, how dialed in they are, it's amazing. Like, to understand how high of a level that they're working at. Like, they're protecting the president. They're protecting the vice president. They're protecting our Constitution. The things that they're protecting and the level that they're working at. Like, when you walk in, you you know, sometimes you walk into certain places and, and, and you feel like the security is overdoing something. When you walk in, you just know, like, no, I need to go about it this way and they make you feel like it's going like it's no games, and as you'd expect, I thought I thought that was amazing. We got in. One crappy part about the day was we had to walk a long ways because the buses aren't going all the way up to the White House, and it was raining. So that was the one crappy part. Uh, but in saying that, you get to the White House, and that was great. Uh, I know Steve publicly said that uh, some players and coaches has sat down and spoke about us in a couple of different meetings. Uh, I think one was on gun violence, one was on voting. Uh, I didn't actually sit in those meetings. Um, I know Steph was in uh, some of the meetings. I know Steve was in some of the meetings. I'm not actually sure who else was in those meetings, but I did know some of those was taking place. And then quite frankly, when you have the opportunity to go to the White House and you care about some of these issues, what better time than to use the access that basketball has given you to speak on some of these issues? And, and I thought that was absolutely incredible that, you know, guys took advantage of the opportunity and it wasn't just about showing up to be honored um, for, for what you accomplished in basketball. Uh, my personal experience uh, my personal experience, like I said, was incredible. Uh, the one thing that I loved most about it was being able to share uh, that opportunity with my wife. Uh, my wife, my wife having the opportunity to take a picture and meet uh, Vice President Kamala Harris was incredible. My wife uh, in college wanted she she actually wanted to pledge AKA. Our Vice President is an AKA, and so just for her to share that moment. Um, to to take in that experience, for us to take in that experience together in our first year of marriage, absolutely amazing. Um, she was very stunning in her all pink, uh, what do they call it, Barbie core? Or I think that's that's the term for it. Absolutely stunning. Made me look good, which I need and I'll take. So thank you to my lovely wife, Hazel. It was an incredible experience with you, my love. But that was great. Uh, the food was great. I actually got a chance to go in the kitchen and meet the head chef. The food was absolutely amazing. Uh, they had drinks. They had, I mean, the hospitality that they they showed for us or, sh or showed us, had for us, gave to us, was absolutely amazing. And I, and I tipped my hat to them on that. And, and I was talking to a few people on the administration, and they were just saying, President Biden is really big on hospitality. He feels if someone comes into your house, these are the things they should have, and that's how he makes sure the White House is ran. And I think that's absolutely incredible. Uh, you you know, what, one of the biggest things, you know, we've talked about this before on uh, not, um, not meeting your hero is usually a letdown. To go to the White House and it not be laid out the right way from a hospitality standpoint would be like meeting a hero and it being a letdown. So super thankful. Uh, the way they rolled out the red carpet was a great experience. And then also another thing that you love is to see 
the guys and women who's never been there before. Um, it's not quite as drastic of a difference as a player winning their first championship and someone else winning their second or third championship. Because I'll tell you, as someone who's been before, it's still as amazing. And another thing, by the way, another touch that was really incredible that I was happy I was, uh, we had the opportunity to see were the Obama portraits are now up in the White House. We had the opportunity to see First Lady Michelle Obama's portrait, which is absolutely stunning. We had the chance to take pictures and see uh, President Obama's portrait. And to see the portrait of an African-American woman and an African-American man in the White House like that, it, it's, it, I'm getting chills right now just thinking about it. Um, as, a, as a young African-American man, that's something that wasn't possible before. And so to see that is absolutely incredible. And it's, it's just something that you saw and you really felt good about. And so overall, um, the experience was great. And I have to say my experience this time was even better than the experience last time. And that's tough, man. The last time we went with President Obama, like just that alone in, in itself is like. But uh, like I said, to, it's about the people that you're with. And I think for me, what took the cake was just sharing that experience with my wife. So that's kind of a quick rundown, if you will, of our White House visit. Um, I hope, you know, if you haven't had the opportunity to visit the White House, set up a tour. Um, and see what you can see because it's nothing like it. Uh, I mean, it is a one of a kind experience, and just knowing all the history that that and and all of the decisions that are made in in one place, absolutely incredible. So if you get the opportunity, you're in D.C., definitely try to check it out. I promise you, you will not regret it. And oh, actually, lastly, when President Obama, when excuse me, when President Biden. decided that he was going to take the knee. And by the way, I had someone ask me yesterday, like, was there any significance in him taking the knee? I'm not someone that tries to make something more than what it is. What I honestly think it was and thought it was, was that level of the stage is lifted above the riser that we were standing on. So if he stands there, he's blocking someone. And trying to squeeze in, I think, would have been even harder than him taking the knee at his age and getting up. When I saw him getting, when, when I knew it was time to get up, I actually wanted to step onto the riser and help him up. But you're in the White House, and you don't want to make a sudden movement next to the president. So if you kind of look at the video, I kind of like start to go, and I pull back, then I reach my arm, then I pull back. Ultimately, want to help, hand a helping hand to our president and make sure he's well and he gets up well. But on the flip side of getting tackled by the Secret Service, I don't think that would have been good. So I stayed back. But know that my heart was in the right place. And then lastly, I'll, I'll share this uh, with my experience. I had a long conversation with um, our vice president, um, Kamala Harris. And the gist of our conversation or the topic of our conversation was the game chess. I don't know how to play chess. It's, I've started to learn the game and learn, you know, I know what the pieces do now, but obviously, you know, the strategy of it, I'm still not quite there yet. But we were speaking about chess. She learned how to play chess from her uncle as a, as a, as a small child. And I asked her a question. I said, has it, which sparked our, I, we probably stood there and talked for 25 or 30 minutes, which is, amazing in itself. I said, has it been everything that you expected it to be? And her eyes lit up and smiled from here to here. And she said, and more. And we went into, you know, a, a little bit of what she's experienced, but then we went into just life and, the, and, and it led us to the game of chess and how in life, like the game of chess It's very much like the game of life. There are a bunch of different pieces on the board. They all do different things. No, they're all not equally 
as important. But the movement of one, the protection of one, is equally as important to the makeup of the whole team. And it's just so many lessons from life that we spoke about that you can take from that. In chess, if you're looking one step ahead, you lost. In life, you can't just look one step ahead. You got to be four or five moves ahead. And so we, we, we really discussed that, and it was great. It made me want to learn the game of chess more. So some of you grandmasters out there, if you're a subscriber or listener to the show, please reach out because I want to learn. Um, I do understand that in life, but I also want to learn the game because I need to beat up on Klay Thompson like Ty Jerome has been doing. So that was my experience from the White House. I hope you all take the chance, if you can, to go check it out. It's unbelievable. That is going to be it for the top of the show. Uh, but before we get out of here, as you can see, the curtains has been closed. But there's an unveiling taking place. What is that unveiling? That unveiling is I am sitting in the room that all you people complained about me doing a podcast during the NBA Finals. I am in the great city of Boston. So you can see Boston, the city of Boston behind me. And as you all know, uh, our listeners that's been here, you know, those of you that haven't and you're new, thank you. We love you. Hope you stay. But Jackson, our producer, is a big-time Boston Celtics fan. Well, we all know that sucks because they lost us in the championship. They also lost to us a few weeks ago now, a month ago, about a month ago, a little over a month ago. And... um. Jackson today in my in my rundown of my topics of what we're going to talk about on the show, he puts on there, should we make a bet on the game? And I couldn't help but to think, I beat these people in a world championship. He's paid nothing. I just beat these people a month ago. He paid nothing. Now all of a sudden he wants to make a bet. When we're coming to Boston, quite frankly, you know we can win on the floor. <laughs> Celebrated on the parquet floor, our only second team in history. So we know that, but I'm going to tell you what he's thinking for our listeners out there. What he's thinking is, ah, Warriors been struggling a bit. Ah, their record on the road has been it's, it's, it's a little rough right now. So we're going to sneak a win. So let me sneak a win in this bet. But where was that bet in there in the NBA Finals? Where was that bet before our road record starts sucking? Where was that bet then? We don't know. So he's trying to take advantage of the situation. Quite frankly, my out is I can't bet on Warriors games, brother. I can't bet on NBA games. So you just enjoyed as an L as it's going to come. But if you have an opinion, we would love to hear it, Jackson. I was just thinking uh, new year, new pod, new season. Maybe we could uh, have a little friendly wager on the game, but you're right. You can't fit on the game. And I thought, you know, Jalen Brown's hurt right now. I figured we'd have to even the playing field, you know, Celtics in first place, Warriors struggling on the road. Might Jalen Brown out might seem a little bit more fair, you know, but you're right. You're right. You're right. We'll have to see, what, how, what we'll have to the, see how the game goes, and we'll come back next week. I have a question week. for you. I have a question for you. What did the Celtics finish the season um, in the Eastern Conference last year? First place. Sounds familiar. That's a wrap from this episode of the Draymond Green Show. They're in first place again. We weren't in first place last year, but guess what? First place. What's up, everybody? It's Draymond Green. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel below so you don't miss any more of this great content going forward.